Well, hello, and welcome again to the 2012fad.com. I will be your host for this evening, and my name is Charlie Blue Hawk. Last night we, we talked about Human 2.0, and where perhaps our masters, junior management and Hate Incorporated, really, 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 really hate us. They obviously hate us. I mean, look what they're doing to us now. But the part of us, well, all parts of us that they cannot be, they can't love, they have no compassion, they have no concepts of joy outside of their ability to hurt the innocent, the helpless, the hopeless, and the defenseless. That's where their joy comes from. And part of their gibbering madness, their terror, their fear, their hatred of us, comes from the fact that they cannot do most of what we can do. Evolve, for example. Be better than we are. And what they can't do, and what they won't do, what they can't own, what they cannot control, they have to kill, they have to destroy, they have to. It's the basic difference between right and wrong, good and evil. Good can survive all by itself. Evil can't. Evil has to feed. And I grew up with this uh, really simple concept. The uh, various families I was, uh, I can't say I lived with them, I was tossed into various uh, prisons. And they were never family, they were tormentors, torturers, prison guards, I'm not even sure what to call them. They were CIA assets, they were U.S. Army Air Corps intelligence idiots, monsters. And not just me, a lot of children, more children than I even, even want to think about were subject to these horrific experiences by the CIA in their attempts to breed uh, soldiers, sex slaves, servants. And a lot of their experiments fail, thank goodness, but there are no survivors, of course. I'm certainly not a survivor. But the key issue to part of the CIA mind control programming is pain and horror. It's an integral part of all of their programming uh, projects. And what is ne necessary for the host families, I suppose you can call them, was their viciousness, their cruelty. And because I was not one of them, they put, took particular delight in breaking my bones, gang raping me, torturing me on a regular basis, and other non-survivors of CIA mind control projects that I've met um, frankly had the same experiences. They were all with military family quote-unquote backgrounds. They were all viciously horribly brutalized as children for no particular reason other than the fact that hatred was the driving force. And I know hatred has to feed on good. I know that. I've seen it with my own eyes. Over and over and over again. I once uh, knew an old actor in Hollywood and I would tell him these stories. They were actually, he was actually friends with these two U.S. Army Air Corps intelligence uh, operatives. He had known them since the war and he considered them to be their, his best friends and I, I was introduced to him through them as part of uh, the show they were putting on to pretend that they were just regular guys, regular folk, regular families, which of course they were not. But this old uh, actor was a very kind man, and I eventually felt comfortable enough around him where I tried to tell him the truth about his quote-unquote friends and what they planned to do to him. They were using him, of course. And as a good, decent man, he just couldn't bring himself to believe that these two guys that he had known for, I don't know, at that time, 40 years, would do that to him. And I tried to explain it to him, and he just, he just couldn't believe it. 
And I finally said, you know, I'm going to, I'm, he says, you're not going to do anything violent against them or anything. I said, no, I'm going to do the worst possible thing in the world I can do to these creatures. I'm going to leave them alone. I'm going to leave them alone with each other. And this old actor, he just went white. He said, that's the most horrible thing I've ever heard. I said, yeah, I know. So the hatred that you're experiencing now, the evil, the viciousness, the cruelty, the mindless brutality that you're experiencing now, I grew up with as a child. And I thought after escaping, I would never, ever see it again. Unfortunately, the place I escaped to was Los Angeles. <laughs> Probably not a good choice. Because now the hatred I grew up with as a child is now running the Western world quite openly. But I do know, not necessarily why they do it, but I know the motivation. I know what the result will be. Evil must feed. And it must feed on the weak, the helpless, the hopeless, and the defenseless. It has to feed. Evil can feed on itself, but it just doesn't enjoy the experience. So I wonder, we talked briefly about the elder race, the, the race of giants who have lived on this planet with us for quite a long time, millions of years at least. All you have to do is uh, do a keyword search on the internet, out of place artifacts, and you will find uh, a stone, which used to be wet sand next to a riverbed, where you see human footprints, could be you or me, walking barefoot, dinosaur footprints, same time, same place. And the footprints, barefoot footprints, of giants. Folk 14 foot tall or about. Now, if the story is true, if the fairy tale is true, the elder race, the giants, they didn't create you and I. I, I get the impression that they were more like babysitters or um, temporary custodians to look after us. Or they just may have been nice neighbors and said, oh my God, who, who, who created you people and why did they leave you alone? And being basically having the mentality of engineers, you know, brute force gets the job done. But being very kind people, they looked after us. And at a certain point in, in our history, when our masters arrived here in their ship, the moon we call it, The engineers, the elder race, the giants, recognized that this was a war. It was the same war that uh, God and Satan started millions of years ago. Who knows? So Amalek, the good God, and Yahweh, her lover, were at war. And the elder race, the giants, recognized that our masters, in this case junior management, were servants probably helpless servants of the devil. And so they drove our masters at that time, millennia ago, into the surface of the earth to keep them away from us. But then they realized that there was a bigger war. This was only junior management. They needed to get to senior management. They couldn't get to the CEO because, by definition, the CEO is in hell. And Western scientists have finally admitted that our universe, the place where you and I live, is encased inside of a bubble of energy. Our entire universe is inside of a soap bubble of energy. By definition, inside of the soap bubble is heaven, outside of the soap bubble is hell. And Amalek, the good God, through her lover, Yahweh, Satan, out of the universe. So the elder race, being physical beings, couldn't go there. But they could get to the devil's servants. And so they left the earth to fight a bigger battle. The giants, the elder race, went to fight senior corporate management of Hate Inc. And I wonder if they knew that they would fail. I wonder about that because The dead brown dwarf star, as part of the natural life cycle of our solar system, again a wonderful choice of, you know, to put us for the last 2.5 billion years, 
The dead brown dwarf star passes through the plane of our solar system every 32,000 years. And the elder race, the giants, must have known this. They were smart folk. And their plan, apparently, was to trap the most senior of corporate management of Hate Inc. in, a dead, in another dead star, Belagues. The elder race, the first creations of the devil, or first attempts of creating life. And the funny thing is, you and I can create life. It's not hard. You take a beaker of water, you take some electricity, you put in some um, organic, well, carbon. You can burn some grass from the front lawn, put some burnt ash into a container of water, put a little electricity through it, you know, get a 9-volt battery with some wires, stick both ends of the wires into the water, leave it for a few hours, cover it overnight, and you know what happens. Life springs out. So you and I can create life. No big deal. It's not very you know, extensive or anything, but it's alive. So Satan, in her infinite arrogance and laziness and stupidity, her unwillingness to learn and experience and grow on her own, she created life to defy her lover, Amalek, God. And of course, what Satan created was ancient old ones. Basically, the same thing you and I could do in a bottle of water with a 9-volt battery. Unfortunately, Satan did it on a massive scale. She created single-cell organisms, diseases that were miles tall and only could destroy. So the elder race went, left us, and I'm sure they were, they were living on other worlds, so they all gathered together, and they, probably in quite a battle, managed to encase, imprison, the ancient old ones in Belagues. Imprison them, because they couldn't get to God, or their God, Satan, because Satan lives outside of the universe, in hell. But they could encase her most senior corporate management. What if the giants, the elder race, when they left us, knew that they would probably fail. Well, being good engineers, they had a fallback plan. Our solar system and the atom are the same design. It's got a central core and it's got little things spinning around it, protons and neutrons. We have a sun with things spinning around it, planets. The universe is electrical. So in the microcosm, the atom, in the macrocosm, the solar system is the same design. What if, being engineers, they realize that you and I are basically electrical, like the universe, and the only difference between you, you and I and a little puddle of water is a couple pounds of chemicals and some electricity? What if the elder race, the engineers, the kind, gentle people who helped us, what if their fallback plan was to give the brown, dead brown dwarf star a positive or a negative charge? Change it somehow. What if they knew that when the dead brown dwarf star passed through the plane of our solar system, with, a, with actually now, it probably originally had a, a, a neutral charge, what if they changed the electrical charge of the dead brown dwarf star, either positive or negative? That would cause, as the dead brown dwarf star passed through the plane of our solar system, an electrical discharge, planetary lightning. Why would they do that? Because they knew that spark of life was needed to wake you and I up. And we would, we would go from seven billion head of cattle to an army of seven billion men and women, seven billion human beings aware. It's just a thought. Because if the planetary lightning basically disinfects the planet Earth, gives us a dry, clean planet after the dead brown dwarf star swings back out into deep space away from us, what if it also dry cleans us, detoxes us. I know the effects of uh, detoxing, having gone through it 10 times now. And I know that each time I detox, I'm more aware 
of the world around me. I can think more clearly. But that's why I thought tonight we would chat about the problems with being healthy, because every time I detoxed, I could, as I said, become more aware of my surroundings, but I also was more aware of the poisons that we're living in. Tobacco, for example. Tobacco, cigarettes that come from the United States, are filled with poisons. Poisons that, from my point of view, are just unbelievable that anybody would actually do that to themselves voluntarily. Cigarettes from the United States are filled with artificial nicotine and artificial formaldehyde, which I can now smell. When I was young, or my body was younger, I don't think I was ever young, I worked in a fiberglass uh, factory in a place called Huntington Beach, California, about two, three hour drive south of Los Angeles. And in tradition, you know, the tradition of uh, the cheap uh, people who run companies like this, there was no ventilation and I didn't have a mask. So if you ever worked with fiberglass, and I hope you have not, very minute particles of plastic, I was breathing it every single day. I lost my sense of smell and could barely taste anything because my body was, again, poison. So when I started eating organic food and using uh, colloidal silver, one of those remarkable occurrences to me was all of a sudden my sense of smell had returned and I could actually taste again, which I never thought I would ever do. I hadn't been able to taste anything or smell anything for two decades. That's what eating, well, in this day, I should say, that's what comes from not eating poison gives your body the ability, the chance to expel the poisons out of you. And they will pass right out of you the moment you stop eating poison. And it's going to be fairly explosive. And I'll, I'll tell you this right now. It's going to get your attention. But as you look at the waste matter coming out of your body, you see things in that waste matter that have no business being inside of a body, certainly not yours. And you'll think to yourself, oh my God, that was inside of me? Because as the poisons leave your body, your mind is no longer on drugs. Because poison equals drugs. Drugs equals hallucinations. Drugs equal subservience. And you look into the bowl on the toilet and you see this stuff floating there and you're thinking, oh my God, that was in me? I remember Coca-Cola used to be my favorite drink, of course. I'd have a, um, I'd go to McDonald's, have a double, what was it, a double Big Mac with cheese, Coca-Cola, and uh, a big side of fries. Best food in the world for taste. Because at the time, my body was still so polluted, I could taste the chemicals that, made, that gave the flavoring to all this stuff. Because all of McDonald's food is plastic, basically. And Coca-Cola, hey, Coca-Cola, 100 years ago, was sold as a medicinal remedy. It had cocaine in it. And I'll tell you a little secret. Coca-Cola still has cocaine in it. Coca-Cola is the only company in the United States that has a legal license from the U.S. government to import coca leaves, process them, quote-unquote taking the flavor <laughs> and putting it into their syrup for their drinks, and then selling the purified cocaine to dentists. You can look this up on the Internet. You don't need me for this. But I remember eating organic food and the explosive <laughs> detoxing happening over and over and over again. And it was, it was quite brutal, but afterwards I was just so relieved. Thank God that's over with. And this uh, cute girl who was a very severe drug addict, she was trying to stop doing drugs, but of course, as we know, when you take drugs, you're just selfish. You don't care about anybody else but yourself, but I was still trying to help. And she insisted that I share a sip of, of her Coca-Cola with her. I mean, that's a sweet, you know, 
thoughtful thing. And I just, I couldn't, you know, just, ooh, geez, okay. And I remember just taking one swallow of her Coca-Cola. And for the next few hours, I could actually feel the Coca-Cola was burning a hole in my stomach. I could feel it burning the lining of my stomach. This is what the problem is with being healthy in our world. When people smoke around me, not only can I smell the horrible chemicals in the, in the smoke, I can smell the purified artificial nicotine and the purified artificial formaldehyde leaching through their bodies in sweat. Because as your body absorbs these poisons, it purifies them. You can look up on the internet again, um, I think it was fluoride and the human body as a filtering system. Somebody in the government, one of our masters in junior management, came up with the idea of purifying poisons out of our environment by feeding them to you and me and having our bodies filter these poisons out of the environment. You can look that up. Only someone purely evil would take the human body and use it as a filter for poisons. So when you smoke, I can smell it on you. I can smell the poisons that your body is purifying. And they used to be something they would call secondhand smoke. They don't even talk about that anymore because that's a joke. When you smoke, and your body is purifying the artificial formaldehyde and the artificial nicotine in those cigarettes, your body's a filter. It purifies these things. And then when your body reaches a saturation point, when the filter can no longer hold anything else, the filter, of course, starts to leach out, leak out these poisons in the most purified state you can imagine. And if you have children in your home, you're poisoning them to death. You're killing your own children. I've actually had a conversation with smokers about this, and they said, uh, and so what? As their children are sitting around them and they're smoking. Again, selfishness. They don't care. I can smell it. They don't care. They know they're doing it. They don't care. So when I say uh, there's no such thing as alcoholism, it's a choice. There's no such thing as, you know, <laughs> Genetic uh, drug addiction, it's a choice. I've seen it with my own eyes. It's a choice. But the problems with being healthy is you can smell this stuff and you just can't believe it. Coca-Cola, take a sip. Oh my God, you can feel it burning your stomach because the poisons that you had in your body are gone. Basically, you were plastic coated <laughs> inside and out. And so... Your taste buds are so numb, you can only taste the artificial flavors of McDonald's foods, which are all created by a laboratory, and they do a great job, by the way, a laboratory in New Jersey. There's a stunt that uh, people sometimes do. They'll take a McDonald's cheeseburger, leave it in the wrap, and stick it in the closet, and leave it for a few years. Take it out, and it hasn't changed. It hasn't aged. It hasn't degraded because it's plastic. But it still smells wonderful. I don't think you should eat it, personally. But it's plastic. And it's plastic with artificial flavors. And so when you deliberately do that to yourself, the plastic just builds up in your system, and your body just holds on to it longer and longer and longer. That's why people in the United States who eat fast food are fat pigs. I'm one of them. I'm still trying to get rid of this, this ball of fat or skin or whatever it is around my belly. I can't get rid of it. And it's a holdover from eating at McDonald's three times a day. My own fault. Can't blame them for that. It tasted good and it was easy. That's the problem with being healthy. Another horrifying thing you'll discover is Teflon. Teflon cooking pots. Teflon is basically aluminum. Aluminum, when you eat it, is poison. Salt, for example, has powdered aluminum in it. 
so it will flow out of the container when you pour it. The phrase is, uh, when it rains, it pours. Well, the reason salt, which normally just collects moisture out of the air and turns to crystal, the reason it doesn't do that in manufactured salt that's uh, processed in the United States, because it has powdered aluminum added to it. You're actually being fed aluminum particles, which is a deadly poison. When you cook at the same, with the same breath, in Teflon pans, Teflon is aluminum. You are cooking with pans that are designed to poison you. And one of the problems with being healthy is you can taste particles of Teflon, particles of aluminum, in the food you cook in that Teflon pan. Myself, I rented a, a room at a place and the only cooking utensils that were in the kitchen were Teflon. So I said, okay, I'll give it a try. Hoping against hope, I'm wrong. So I cooked once. Okay, that's fine. So I may, maybe it was my imagination. Thank God. So I cooked in the Teflon pan the second time. The second time, I could actually feel microscopic particles of metal going down my throat. I could feel them on the back of my throat as they were going down. And I could feel these little particles, smaller than grains of sand, working their way down my throat along the top. It's aluminum. It's poison. So if you're trying to get pregnant, if you have children, and you're cooking with Teflon, you're poisoning your own body. It's the problem with being healthy in this world. Toothpaste with fluoride. Fluoride has no business in the human body at all. Fluoride does not make your teeth stronger. Fluoride does not make your bones stronger. It makes your teeth and your bones brittle. The reason fluoride is in our water supply and in our toothpaste, the Nazis discovered in World War II, that when they added fluoride to the water of the prison camps, it made the prisoners subservient. Fluoride is a poison. Today, in America, if you look at the uh, labels on toothpaste that have fluoride, it says, do not swallow, do not give to children under the age of five. A hundred years ago, Fluoride only had one purpose in our society. Our grandparents used fluoride as rat poisoning. Look it up on the web. You don't need me for this. Aspartame, artificial sweeteners, added to our foods so we won't get fat. Well, aspartame, I remember when aspartame was, uh, was introduced on the market. I tasted it once, and this is before I even knew what organic food was, and I had to spit it out. Aspartame is what scientists call a left-handed molecule. It won't bind with us, which I guess our molecules are right-handed. To me, aspartame did then, still to this day, smells and tastes like battery acid. It's a poison. The problems with being healthy is at a certain point, you won't get sick anymore from colds, flus, um, anything else. When you add um, food-grade hydrogen peroxide, which is nothing but oxygen in liquid form to your diet, and you have to be careful, this stuff is very strong. But you also add colloidal silver, which in this case is particles of silver, which are actually good for you. There's a few other things. There's some electromagnetic, uh, electromedical devices I would highly recommend. At that point, you don't get AIDS. At that point, you don't get cancer. At a certain point, there you won't get more gallons. More gallons is another one of these terrifying, hateful things they're doing to us. More gallons is an artificial life form that our masters, the Junior Management of Hate Incorporated, discovered in one of their travels, in their, another one of their endless scientific projects. They've engineered it to be 
what they are, a parasite. But this is a parasite that they, they're trying to put into us. And they've seeded Coca-Cola and Pepsi and all packaged foods that come from the United States are seeded with this stuff, with spores. The interesting thing about colloidal silver is it kills all this stuff on contact and keeps you healthy. Colloidal silver, silver particles in water, defeats all of the junior management's attempt to implant us with chips to, uh, to keep track of us. Again, this is not fantasy, this is reality. They want to put physical chips, electronic monitoring devices, ID tags in each and every one of us. They've been experimenting with our pets for years now, and vets will tell you that these implants cause cancer. But with colloidal silver in your system, minute particles of it, it destroys these implants. They won't function, they won't work, and also keeps you from getting cancer. These are the problems with being healthy. You see things that other people don't see because your brain isn't poisoned. The problem with being healthy is you are yourself. You are nowhere, no one else. I am. I am that I am. I am myself. I am no one else because I don't want to be. I don't need to be. I don't need to be Britney Spears. I don't need to be uh, Hugh Jackman. I don't need to be Brad Pitt. I just need to be me. That's, believe me, that's hard enough. That's enough of a, of a job right there for yourself. And because you can think for yourself, and because you can see and hear clearly, the other problem with being healthy is you can't watch television, especially not the mainstream news, because you can't believe, or you can't tolerate, you can't literally stomach the stupidity, the nonsense, the bizarre things that our masters, junior management, are saying. You can't listen to news on, in the United States because every 15 minutes there's another horrifying thing that's going to destroy the earth and all of us with it. Another, another 15 minutes is another story of something horrible that's going to destroy the earth and we're all going to go with it. Every 15 minutes there's hysteria. And it's not simply that they talk about it, they're screaming about it. And if you can stomach it long enough, turn on your television during this for the 6 o'clock news and just flip through the channels. You'll hear the same news story, the same hysteria, the same dire warnings of doom and destruction and horror on every single news program at pretty much the same time. Again, something you can do without me. And the other problem with being healthy? Watch people who are just watching television. There's something called the lily wave, the lily effect, which is the flicker rate, I believe it's 60 megahertz, which all televisions uh, have had. The flicker rate, it's, I believe again, it's 60 megahertz. You have to look it up. It's the lily wave or the lily effect. It puts people to sleep. It makes them suggestible. So, you could have programming on television and you want people to be susceptible to it. The lily wave, that, six, that flicker rate of the television at 60 megahertz, I believe, leaves you open to suggestion. So now you've got your body's poisoned. Your brain, because your body's poisoned, is on drugs. You've got the lily wave putting you to sleep and you've got fluoride making you subservient. That's really something to see. That's the problem with being healthy. You're aware of the world around you, and nobody else is. So how do we talk to 7 billion people who are on drugs? Have you ever tried to, to reason with a drunk? You ever had a tie, ever try to reason or have a conversation with a drug addict. It's not possible. 
So how do we talk to 7 billion people? How do we wake them up? Maybe the elder race, if we're lucky, engineered a backup plan. Sort of makes you want the planetary lightning to hit today, don't it? But it does make more sense to me now what the ancient Celts were talking about when they gave this blessing. They wanted you to be you and nobody else. May you live as long as you wish. May you love as long as you live. For the 2012fad.com is brought to you by This Coffee is Charlie Blood. Blood. Love Letters Between the Dead. A series of five erotica horror novels about a fallen angel finding his way back to regain his own soul and how the CIA war against the human race. Their black magic captures and traps him in the body of a mind-controlled slave designed to hunt down and to kill their god, their Satan.